How's it going, everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel and MCU. And before we get started, I must issue a spoiler warning for the ending of Spider-Man No Way Home and the post credit scenes, which we are about to talk about. But if you've seen them or you are simply ready for the spoilers, let's go ahead and get started. In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter goes to Doctor Strange to ask him to cast a spell to make everybody forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Strange starts to cast the spell and says that everyone is going to forget that Peter is Spider-Man but Peter quickly realizes that people should still know. At least some people, like his girlfriend MJ, his best friend Ned, his Aunt May, Happy Hogan. So Strange rewrites the spell a bunch until it eventually gets out of control, but Doctor Strange is able to contain it. However, as we would soon go on to find out, Strange wasn't able to contain all of it. Some villains ended up breaking through. Instead of making people forget that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, it actually brought people who knew Peter was Spider-Man into the universe. And this started to break reality by the end of the movie. The spell ends up getting let loose and Doctor Strange cannot hold all of the people back coming from other realities. So in a true Peter Parker act, he puts everybody else in front of him and says, make everyone forget that I am Spider-Man. No exceptions, everyone. Strange casts the spell and it seemingly works. By the end of the movie, nobody remembers that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. In fact, it seems like nobody really remembers Peter at all, which I'll talk about in a different video. But it looks like this does not come without consequences to Doctor Strange. As the second post credit scene for Spider-Man No Way Home is a trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And it looks to be one of the best trailers that I've ever seen from Marvel Studios but first let's talk about that first Venom post credit scene. Now the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene brought Venom and Eddie Brock into the MCU and I know what some people might be thinking, how did they get brought in by Doctor Strange's spell if Eddie Brock didn't know who Spider-Man was, let alone that Peter Parker was Spider-Man? Well keep in mind that Venom did say that he had billions of years of hive knowledge, so I'm willing to bet that it was actually Venom who knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man and not Eddie Brock. In fact it looked like Eddie Brock didn't even know who Spider-Man was at all. So I'll credit Venom with knowing who Peter Parker was. However, this moment is short-lived as when Doctor Strange does the spell that makes everybody forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, sending them back to their own universes, we see Eddie and Venom go back. However, a part of the Venom symbiote does stay behind, which means eventually this is going to go on to bond with Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, and it looks like we may get a more comic accurate Venom story in the MCU at some point in time. And that's pretty much the gist of the first post credit scene. There is a Venom symbiote inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe now without Eddie Brock and the actual Venom that we've seen in the Sony Universe, setting a path for a different new Venom to appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the next post credit scene, like I said, is a trailer for Doctor Strange 2, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, the second post credit scene slash trailer starts off with a black screen. We hear ominous music playing in the background, and then we hear Wong. We hear him say, don't cast that spell, it's too dangerous. Now, we didn't actually hear Wong say this in the actual movie, but we did hear him say it in one of the trailers for Spider-Man No Way Home. We then hear Doctor Strange say, we tampered with the stability of space-time. We see some candles blow out at the Camartage, and then we hear Doctor Strange say, the multiverse is a concept about which we know frightening frighteningly little, which is exactly what he told Peter in Spider-Man No Way Home. This implies that there are severe consequences to what he did in No Way Home that are now coming to fruition in Multiverse of Madness. This is also demonstrated in the very next scene that we get. We see Doctor Strange's old watch. This is the one watch that he kept and did not sell. He had it the entire time even after he became a sorcerer. It was broken and reflects the fact that he himself was broken. His hands no longer worked. And now we can see his reflection in the watch in this post credit scene, still shattered, reflecting that he himself is indeed still shattered and the multiverse is now shattered as well. And unfortunately, as the watch reflects, it is Doctor Strange himself who has shattered the reality that he knows. This is further confirmed as we then hear Mordo say, your desecration of reality will not go unpunished. If you recall in the Doctor Strange film, Mordo was kind of devastated that the Ancient One was using dark magic. In the film, he says she drew on its power to steal centuries of life, but she told them that it was forbidden while she did that. And then he said the bill comes due. It always comes due, which is now happening with Doctor Strange and all of his actions. The bill is coming due, including apparently what he did in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. As the next part we hear is Doctor Strange's line from Avengers Infinity War 
door right before he snapped. It was the only way, referring to him giving up the time stone. Now, this implies that there are a lot of things here that are actually responsible for shattering the multiverse, hence multiverse of madness. It's not just what happened in Spider-Man No Way Home, but it's also what happened in Doctor Strange, the first movie, also what happened in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. After all, the Ancient One explained in Avengers Infinity War in 2012 when Hulk went back and talked to her, she explained that if you remove one Infinity Stone from a universe that would tamper with the flow of time and that their world would be overrun and millions would suffer without their chief weapon against the powers of darkness, referring to the Infinity Stones. And this is actually exactly what is happening right now. The Infinity Stones no longer exist in our universe. They were destroyed by Thanos. In fact, this is even a point that is made during Spider-Man No Way Home when Peter originally goes to Doctor Strange and asks him to reverse time. Doctor Strange said even if he would be willing, he doesn't have the Time Stone anymore. The chief weapon against against the power of darkness that the Ancient One mentioned. We see Doctor Strange go through a gate in which New York seems to be kind of falling apart. This actually looks like exactly what we saw in the What If episode where Doctor Strange and Strange Supreme were in, What If Episode 4. Doctor Strange bypassed an absolute point in time. This affected the universe and essentially made it start going away. And eventually that universe did completely go away. It sort of dissipated into nothingness, which seems to be what is happening right here. Now, as far as absolute points in time are concerned, Doctor Strange could have actually bypassed several of them possibly affecting infinite amounts of different universes. He gave up the Time Stone, which the Ancient One did call their chief weapon, and even though Infinity War and Endgame made it seem like it was supposed to happen, perhaps there are some big consequences that follow up with that. Plus, not to mention, his spell did cause the Sinister Five to come into Spider-Man No Way Home and the main MCU timeline. Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman, and the Lizard all have very different fates now when they go back to their own universes. They were all supposed to die or get locked up in a prison. However, they are now cured and they are back in their original universes. Their fates have drastically changed, not to mention the fates of their Spider-Mans have changed as well. For example, when Norman Osborn goes back, he's no longer going to be the Green Goblin. This will cause Harry to no longer turn into Goblin and die. This will have huge implications on Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And that's just one case. Alfred Molina is going to go back and his Doc Ock is not going to die as well. The repercussions of what happened in Spider-Man no Way Home are going to be huge, and this is why Doctor Strange is going to have to pay for them. He could have broken multiple absolute points in time, causing not only his universe, but possibly infinite amounts of universes to start to collapse. But then a lot happens in this trailer. We see Doctor Strange enter a very dark sanctum, one that is flooded with water. We hear him say the words, but I never meant for any of this to happen. He is clearly talking to somebody that is accusing him of being responsible for all of this. The fabric of reality essentially melting. Now, he could be talking to Wong, he could be talking to Mordo, or he could be talking to somebody else. There's rumors that the Illuminati could show up in Multiverse of Madness, and it's possible that they kind of govern the multiverse, and they could be super pissed at him. We see a shot of Wong his hand using some chaos magic. Then we see Dr. Christine Palmer walking down the aisle and get this, Stephen Strange, Dr. Strange is not waiting for her. He is actually in the pew. The look on her face as she walks down makes it seem like she might have a little bit regret of what she's about to do, not marrying Stephen Strange. And Strange doesn't look too happy as well, but at the end of the Dr. Strange film, they kind of left their own separate ways as friends. We then see a woman from behind wearing a star on the back of her jacket. This is America Chavez played by Soshi Gomez, who I actually met and had the pleasure to talk to for a little bit at the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings premiere. Now, her powers are that she's able to open up star portals to different dimensions. So this is kind of a perfect movie for her to enter here, one where the multiverse is in madness, and it looks like Doctor Strange is going to try and fix it. America Chavez, aka Miss America, is definitely going to be a key asset. We then see a very beat up Wong who looks like he's having a rough time. We then see somebody falling through a portal of a shattered reality in which I originally thought was Doctor Strange, but it kind of looks like they have a ponytail here, so maybe not strange. But if you look hard enough, you can definitely tell that that portal is a star portal. So it was created by America Chavez. We then cut to the big scene. Doctor Strange goes and he finds Wanda. She says, I knew sooner or later you'd show up. And she starts talking about the mistakes that she made in WandaVision in Westview. But Doctor Strange says, I'm not here to talk about Westview. Wanda then asks, what are you here for? And he says, how much do you know about the multiverse? We need your help. In which Wanda looks very surprised, but we know that Wanda actually probably knows quite a bit about the multiverse at this point. 
At the end of Wanda Vision in the post credit scene, we saw the Scarlet Witch astral projecting and learning about other universes, about different realities, because she was searching for her kids. We actually heard the Doctor Strange theme music playing in the background of this scene. She was searching the Darkhold and actually learning very dark magic, all of course to find her kids and what she finally did here at the very end. But since she was using astral projection to study, we could probably assume that she's read the entire Darkhold, which means that she has been tampering with dark magic, this is something that Mordo said was pretty forbidden. And even in a few scenes later, we see a picture of her as the full Scarlet Witch. We see her in the middle of a seance surrounded by candles, and rumor has it that she is going to be somewhat of a villain in Multiverse of Madness. Now, we're not really sure who the main villain is at this point in time, but we do know that she really wants to find her children, and she has been learning very dark magic. So, she's going to be insanely powerful, and she is the Scarlet Witch now, fully unlocked which makes her even more powerful, and we know that she's probably going to stop at nothing to find her children, even if that means having to fight Doctor Strange. But we'll have to wait and see on that. We then have a scene where Doctor Strange comes out of a door. Now, the base of this door is kind of floating in another reality. It's hard to tell what place this is, but it could be the home of America Chavez, the Utopian Parallel. The Utopian Parallel is a dimension that exists in parallel to all other dimensions of the multiverse. It is actually out of time and outside of the multiverse as well. Well, we see Strange looking out of the door, and behind him we can see America Chavez, and we can see Wanda. We then see Mordo, and we hear him say, I'm sorry, Steven. Then darkness and clouds go over the Carmitage. Strange and Wong look insanely worried. We see the shots of the Scarlet Witch that I talked about before, and as we see Mordo and Doctor Strange fighting each other, we hear him say, I hope you understand. And as he says this, we see Doctor Strange kind of casting some red magic that looks an awful lot like Wanda's chaos magic, and these little orbs kind of look like perhaps different different universes, different worlds, all connected to each other. Perhaps Doctor Strange trying to do some damage control to what Wanda has done, or he himself has done. We then see one of the villains of Multiverse of Madness, what we thought was going to be Shuma Gorth, is actually Gargantos. Now, I've spoken about Gargantos before. Not a very well-known villain. In fact, he's only appeared in a couple of comic issues, but is associated with Namor, the Submariner of Atlantis. If the Illuminati is going to appear in Multiverse of Madness, it is possible that Namor could appear as well as he is part of the Illuminati. This could explain how Gargantos arrives, or they could simply change the entire comic story altogether, and Gargantos could simply be a multi-dimensional villain. It throws a bus at Doctor Strange and America Chavez, but Doctor Strange is able to protect both of them by casting a spell and cutting the bus in half. Then, as we hear Mordo finally finish the sentence, which started off as, I'm sorry, Steven, I hope you understand, the greatest threat to our universe is you. And as he says this, we see an alternate sanctum, which I'm assuming exists in another universe or perhaps in between universes. In the background, it looks like this could be some type of void. I'm actually getting a lot of Loki vibes here when they finally run into He Who Remains. But here we meet another Doctor Strange, which could be Strange Supreme. We were introduced to Strange Supreme in What If Episode 4, and also in the finale as well. It is possible that What If could connect to the live action films. However, I'm probably going to say that this is just a different variant of Doctor Strange, which I think we might see a few of these in the movie. This one does seem to be a lot darker and could be a lot more evil. We could probably assume that if Doctor Strange is at the heart of the multiverse breaking, it's not just one Doctor Strange, but multiple ones, and we can assume that there are going to be some evil ones. And the trailer ends with this strange saying, things just got out of hand. And I don't know about you all, but I am super excited for this movie. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness looks like it's going to be phenomenal. So let me know all your thoughts and theories about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you love Marvel and the MCU and want more content. Don't forget to like the video and for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.